Hello and welcome to the Quest on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Rakhi Bakshi. As you know that each week we bring you a leading personality. We talk to him or her about his or her views and vision, listen to the stories, and it's been a very interesting journey talk, talking to them all. And uh, today also we have a very special guest with us. She's a member of Parliament from Lok Sabha. She's Ms. Sushmita Dev. I welcome her onto the show on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome. Thank you. You know, as we are talking and almost nearing this session of the Parliament, uh, how would you really assess it? Because we saw, let's say, talking about UPA time. There has always been this concern as to who really is responsible. Uh, and we know that this blame game also goes on. Uh, but how would you really look at this session as to how much work has happened finally? How much, uh, I mean, coming from Lok Sabha, I'll say it's continued. Uh, nothing has stopped in Lok Sabha. Whereas it comes to Rajya Sabha, uh, definitely there was a log jam and parliament has been stalled. But uh, I'm forced to say that as a first time MP, uh, how to uh, run the parliament and how a parliament should be run. We got a training of two days, which was done by the speaker's office. And uh, it was very categorically told to us that uh, running the house is the responsibility of the government. And uh, that um, opposition must have its say hmm. and the treasury bench must have its way. Hmm. So that's really the precedent. So, I would say that every time uh, the parliament doesn't function, uh, I wouldn't say that government is uh, solely responsible, but government is equally res responsible. But do you think that uh, on many ways and on many occasions, uh, government has tried to reach out to you? I mean, for example, the latest one would be GST, where I think the government also tried to show its intention positively. You see, the, the entire debate uh, or tussle or the discussion over GST started way back in the monsoon session. Uh, we finished monsoon session. Uh, we started the winter session. We had a gap, gap of uh, more than two months, I think. Um, I wouldn't say that the government made no efforts, but I wonder if the same effort could have been started in those two months gap. Uh, if it had started immediately after the monsoon session, we would have had enough time and we could have had several cups of teas and several discussions so that it could have been introduced in whatever way uh, in the winter session. But sadly enough, the effort started after the winter session had started. But so you're talking about the timing, but not also talking about the intention which the government said that, you know, something which is positive for the country, that's what it maintains. And that's why it wanted everybody to come along. The question is, when do that, when, when did they... Uh, what the intentions of the government are or is can only be derived from their actions. So, uh, after the monsoon session had been washed out for whatever reason, I did not get into that. Mm -hmm. The question is that we had almost two and a half months. Uh, and ideally, I mean, that's those are my views. Mm -hmm. This reconciliation or discussion process vis-a-vis -vis GST could have started straight after the monsoon session. We, we shouldn't, we didn't have to wait for the winter session to start. I mean, if if we needed more than one discussion, which clearly it's required. Okay. Now, as the first time member of parliament, uh, how would you really look at the kind of uh, uh, things going on in the parliament? I mean, for example, how much, how much the government reaches out on many issues or does it only become again, as I was saying uh, in the beginning, that it becomes finally a blame game issue. I mean, whose loss it is finally of the people. I mean, people who've sent, let's say, members of parliament elected them, uh, their voices should be uh, voices should be heard inside the parliament and you are the representatives. Finally, I mean your view as a member of parliament on it. Clearly parliament uh, is, is, a, is, is, a, is the most important forum where we reflect uh, the problems of the public, the mood of the public, the mood of the nation and also issues not just relating to the nation as a whole but our own constituencies. What has been repeatedly uh, highlighted in the media, if you like, is that there has been no work done in the parliament. Whereas that's not true. The land acquisition bill was passed, although it went to a committee, now it's gone to a cold storage. We saw the uh, MMDR uh, new legislation being passed, for which the government is taking credit. That we have filled up the coffers of the government uh, by changing the mining laws. Who did that? This parliament did that. You see, the Insurance Act has been passed, which is a huge reform. So to only focus on what the parliament has not done is not correct. 
and if we choose to do that then one must go into the reasons that why did it happen for example let's talk about the latest thing which is happening and uh, you know talking about juvenile justice uh, amendment uh, bill uh, how would you really look at some of these issues which are really around us haunts us until it really becomes a breaking thing on media and everybody starts shouting about it it really doesn't get that kind of attention finally it's it's getting discussed see i'll tell you the juvenile justice bill was passed by the lok sabha long back last session if i recollect uh, uh, if i recollect properly uh, it has it was introduced in the rajya sabha towards the not recently it was not introduced in the beginning so the question is that uh, yes there is public outrage there about uh, the nirbhaya case and there was some pressure on all parties to consider it although this bill can have no impact on the nirbhaya case now what i'd like to say is we have seen this government pass many ordinances when a bill has been passed by the lok sabha and it's pending in the rajya sabha the government has the power to pass an ordinance as we know now the question is you have to look at both sides i agree that when there is no legislation in either house is not a good thing i don't think anyone can condone that but also where a government has shown his its might and its conviction and its will to act when it comes to land acquisition when it comes to appointing the principal secretary of the honorable prime minister of india a similar uh, will or conviction could have been shown but there are always two views in a situation those are my views the government need not uh, agree to what i am saying so of course the rajya sabha is something that the government looks at as far as numbers are concerned and though i mean when lok sabha happened and your numbers were counted which was less uh, one would really think what numbers they have in rajya sabha uh, but let's begin from uh, also look at bihar for example and uh, let's look at some of the political dimensions there what happens after your success there i mean one would say that though you gained success because of a coalition uh, alliance there uh, the gains are not really yours as a as the congress party because the regional players actually emerged as the winners well <clears throat> strictly speaking uh, it it would be unfair to say that gain is not ours because we uh, increased our number of seats substantially i think from 3 to 40 odd seats uh, but it is also a fact that what works in bihar may not work in other states yeah. i think every state has a unique political situation and i think our leadership is fully aware of that so we will uh, not necessarily replicate bihar in the next set of assembly elections that mm. are coming mm. but today if the bjp had won mm. if the bjp had formed the government i am sure that everybody would have said what a whopping defeat for congress so when the reverse has happened don't take away that uh, moment of uh, victory from oh, us i i think that has really given the boost and, and we can see the moment the bjp had actually. won what would what would have come out in the public domain about so the congress so that's why i talked to you about the gains that you might see yes. now i'm talking to you about the gains that you see and take a road ahead if your if your if your primary uh, political adversary suffers a defeat in in a certain way that is your victory also and in that sense i feel of course it is a victory for the grand alliance so we'll see a uh, forthcoming elections for example uttar pradesh which is a big political play field as we call it uh, uh, how are you looking at it like i said every state is uh, unique in its uh, political circumstances and i think it will be too early for anybody to comment on uh, what will be the political strategy of my party in the up elections it will evolve over the next few months or a uh, year or so that is left for the election so let us see i think to comment now would only be to speculate too early okay so let's come to your home state assam and a, a lot of buzz there but we see now uh, for example some of the congress members is being expelled i mean uh, we know that the political uh, turbulence has just maybe started this is could just be the beginning of it all how would you really view it see assam we have ruled for three terms and uh, there is no doubt that this government has performed there was a time when you could not venture into the streets without worrying about your uh, security and the law and order situation in assam was such but i think congress uh, government and our honorable chief minister has managed to change that situation but the fact also is that uh, if after the 2014 election mm. Uh, in six months, 
uh, what happened to the fate of BJP if in six months anti-incumbency or factors can change. So the question is after having ruled as Assam for 15 years, it is not going to be an easy election. But I can tell you, uh, my field report is, it is definitely not a win-win situation for the BJP. What you see, number of rebels rising actually? See, re rebels are there. But the question is, if rebels have stepped out of the party, the question is what is going to be the impact. And as far as I am concerned, that uh, the people who have been recently suspended and now uh, disqualified, as you have seen, I don't think they can add to BJP's vote bank. I don't think these nine MLAs can add to BJP's vote bank or can get them a seat that they never had. I mean, it is not even clear where they are going to stand for, for from or e even if they are going to stand from the BJP is not clear. So I don't think... But the issues are very clear. For example, when we talk about all this uh, Bangladesh immigration, uh, the issues are very, very, uh, you know, or you talk about disturbances, for example, in, in a fam of all kinds. Uh, See, issues, I'll tell you what, illegal immigration, um, I feel the way it has been managed is impractical. It's not working in Assam. We recently saw the government of India pass two notifications. But there are there is nothing to operate uh, to help the state government uh, operate it on the ground. Because citizenship is a central subject, it's a central act. Mm. So to say you will not be detected and deported, but what will happen to the people who are convicted by court? What will happen to should court simply open the doors of the jail and everybody goes out? So how do you operationalize it? There are no uh, there are no instructions from the government of India. The state government has written to the government okay. of India. So as far as I am concerned, uh, it's just a notification in the air. It has no impact on the ground. We'll of course uh, watch out uh, also and look at all these issues. But right now we're taking a very short break here on the quest on Ratsabha TV. We'll keep talking to Mr. Sushmita Dev after his, with this very short break. But don't go away. We have many important issues still to talk about. Welcome back to the show. You're watching The Quest here on Raj Sabha TV and I am right now talking to Ms. Sushmita Dev. You know, uh, you've talked about as a party about political vendetta and all. I don't really want to take much uh, space th on that. But uh, uh, generally, uh, there are issues. When, when these issues are raised, you'll say that there, there's a blame game again going on. Somebody is trying to really put, uh, you know, ham hammering you maybe. Uh, how would you look at this National Herald case, case also? Well, National Herald case has two aspects. One is of course the legal side, where we can uh, debate all we want about Companies Act and uh, restructuring of a company, but that battle has to be fought uh, in court. But uh, there is absolutely no uh, two ways about it that there is a political angle to it. It is not any ordinary case which has been filed by any ordinary citizen or against any other ordinary citizen. So if you look at it from all angles, you can't uh, disagree that there's a political side to it. Just because somebody is a leading person, you think? See, there, there, there are political personalities on both sides, whether it's the complainant, whether it's the people who are accused in it. So, strictly to maintain that it's only a legal, legal battle, as a party, we don't agree with that. Uh, that although it has been said that the government has nothing to do with it, we've heard that being said repeatedly by various ministers. But the fact is that every debate, uh, every press conference, every press meet that has been done by the party which is running the government of the day has sought to address this issue, has sought to take up this issue to malign our leaders if you like. It's like if, if, if you have nothing to do with it and if it's just a case, then don't come on television debates. Let uh, Mr. Dr. Swami and Congress fight it out. But you can't be a part of something and then you say, but this has nothing to do with me. What would you then say about this whole Arun Jaitley case in the DDCA context? Arun Jaitley's case also has two aspects because it is the Chief Minister of Delhi who has uh, brought this to the forefront. It, there is a member of parliament of the Bharatiya Janata Party who has brought this to the forefront. So obviously there is a legal battle there. I have seen in the papers that there is going to be an inquiry. But there is no doubt that there is a political angle to it. I mean, uh, I mean, you can't deny that. Yeah. 
uh, you know, so what basically I'm trying to also know from you that, you know, when you go and attend a parliament session and you, let's say, from your prism and point of view as a member of parliament, you would like some debate to happen. Haven't we all heard about consensus, democracy at work and things like that. But what happens finally, some statement may be coming from some minister or some leader and then sparks. And then two days we see parliament not really functioning. Then we see some of these issues which come up and parliament again getting into it and not work happening. I mean, how would you really, isn't that dejection at times? There are two, there are two sides to uh, parliamentary procedure. One is legislating, passing bills, debating. And the other is also to highlight issues which are affecting the nation or the national interest if you like. For instance, let's reverse the situation. Given what happened in Arunachal, if we had simply kept quiet and said that this is a state subject hai, or we can't speak on the governor, do you think that as a pol political party we can actually go back in the public domain and tell them to parliamentary decorum ki wajay se, we could not raise it in parliament. See, we are in politics. And I remember the words of a very wise man, uh, Arun Jaitli ji, where he said political parliamentary disruption is a part of political democracy. So, if something... What happens to kind if, of money if, which is being spent and which is being misused? If something maybe in that happens sense. as uh, drastic as in Arunachal, and if we come to parliament and simply talk about a road in zero hour, I think that in itself is betraying, the, uh, betraying our people. So, if you like it in a political democracy, yeah. parliament has been used for raising voices procedurally and outside the procedure also. Coming to the expense of uh, uh, running the parliament, that are you saying that where these are my views, if, some, if something is of great public interest, let us take my constituency, let's say there's a riot in my constituency, okay, and I single-handedly manage to stall the parliament by going into the well or something. I can tell you that if I go back to my constituency and I explain to them that no one was listening to me, the government was not responding to my problem and that's why I had to do it, I don't think that I'll lose the mandate of the people. So. It's a very tenuous, uh, it's a very tenuous argument, but yes, I do feel that where public money is wasted in in running the parliament and by stalling the parliament, the primary responsibility of of is of the government. See, governance is an art. Of course, governance it is. is an art, and I think the players are new. So let's hope that things will improve. I mean, I I don't know whether I should say it as a first time parliamentarian. But that's what I hear my senior leaders say. So I, I am drawing from that, that some, some flaw management needs to be done, better communication. Yeah. Which is, which is, do you think that's happening? Out. Do you think that's happening now? See, I, I hope it will happen because there is nothing the government can't resolve. There is nothing the government can't resolve and doesn't matter which party the government, uh, 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 which party government is there. A government is the guardian of the nation. So, I am from the Congress. That doesn't mean that it is not the responsibility of this government to look after my constituents. Of course it is. And they can if they want. Talking to. about the youth of the nation and you know, uh, I would say that your leadership, I mean, of course, uh, has said earlier and I'm talking also about the vice president of the party that, uh, you know, the younger people would really, t you know, be promoted a lot and we'll see a resurgence as far as party is concerned. How do you really look at that happening actually? See, resurgence, uh, we are already seeing spurts of it. We just won the Jharkhand by election. In Madhya Pradesh, we are from now from 44 to 45. And I mean, I don't know if we have enough time, but I have noticed that NSUI recently has been winning many elections. They have won some elections in uh, election recently in Agra. Uh, we have seen that we have recovered in the rural areas of Gujarat. Gujarat. Hmm. Those are the reports of the election commission. These are not uh, yeah. but my reports. So to say that there is no revival of the party, to say that we, uh, 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 that we are not reviving would be incorrect. But yes, it is. What about okay. South, for example, where we never saw, I mean, BJP uh, was an alien. Uh, the turf was alien for BJP. But now we see even BJP even trying to make inroads there. Yes, definitely. For instance, if you were to say in Assam, 
BJP won seven MP seats. Okay, but BJP has taken away AGP's votes. So I have to say I'm not so thorough about the South, but it is not necessary. Congress's loss. It may be the loss of the left. One doesn't know. Yeah. So what is the new alignment? For example, we talk about 2016. Let's say talk about the strategy of the party. Uh, I know that of course you are a young member, but uh, you know the kind of road ahead for the party and as a leader from the party. How do you see it? See, I will say that um, lot of lot of things in the sense uh, the function the principles on which or the style of functioning of the party is changing since uh, honorable vice president has come to the forefront there is no doubt that the role of youth congress has changed drastically to a far more active and vibrant body uh, whether it comes to um, i would say election strategy hmm. election strategy i personally feel that being a party in the opposition the role of the aicc general secretaries and secretaries has uh, grown a lot is evolving and as we go along as we go along i feel that the way he sees he sees especially uh, uh, injecting energy and including more and more youth in our party's priority for, for rahul gandhi ji so it will happen we are doing many things organizationally uh, at the grassroots uh, aren't you level. pushing for 33% reservation for women the women reservation bill yes well uh, we did have a brief discussion i think it was reported in the papers also we as a party as you know especially our leadership sonia gandhi ji uh, is very passionate about this bill and when we first discussed atrocities on women in the first session i think uh, after um, uh, we came after 16th lok sabha started most of the women including me raised this issue and i hope that this government will use its uh, absolute majority in mandate uh, to bring in for example bring government would say we, they have come out with lot of schemes there is beti bachao and you know whole lot of schemes and new ideas in fact also coming from sometimes women child development minister so how satisfied let's say here as a woman leader you feel that women's issues are being addressed to within parliament there is a strong view that you know legislatively speaking also there is a there is a movement see women's uh, emancipation or empowerment of women um, has many aspects one of which is uh, adequate representation in the parliament is only but one angle yes within political parties for example uh, well that is a matter of debate that is a matter of debate we've seen in the past what has happened in the rajya sabha i mean you have may have watched it more carefully than i did but whatever i saw it was not a very pretty picture because there was lot of uh, lot of opposition but i believe that since it was passed in the rajya sabha and now it is a matter of bringing it to the lok sabha where they have absolute majority uh, strictly speaking there is nothing standing in the way of the government and beti bachao beti padhao women and child development ministry is working although despite their budget cuts i am hoping that i am hoping that this government will uh, not just in its in in its schemes uh, but in its uh, legislative will so its legislative will and bring it although it is complicated i will not say that it is not but there is no reason why they should not because they have the majority okay some hope there uh, one bill uh, which we really looked at uh, uh, and you know we really hoped whistle blowers bill uh, something that when you talk about corruption and you know removing corruption elimination of it all uh, this is this was important uh, why do you think it could not really take off i'll tell you uh, if any party has believed in a rights based legislation is the it's the congress party with its right to education right to information uh, right to employment guarantee or nre gs and all of that but what one has to understand that whistle blowers act was a part of several anti graft legislations that the upa wanted to bring it is seen the light of the day which is a good thing it was passed in the lok sabha i actually spoke on that bill now what i would like to say is right to information is something i can write to an officer within the system and he has to give it to me whistle blowers is about access to information and bringing it in the public domain which no officer will give you so you are blowing the whistle 
against who? Against the system, against the government, against the officers. Is that so tough to achieve? So what what has what has happened is certain sections of the RTI Act have been brought into the Whistleblowers Act, where certain things have been exempted in national interest. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the spy, catch, spy catchers case or the Pentagon case, now see a government may not reveal to me at what price they are buying weapons from another country. It may be a sensitive deal. But today, I should be in a position to throw that information in the public domain without having access to it legally if it is in the national interest to show that there is something wrong with that deal. That's the Whistleblowers Act. And I hope that this government will recognize this and I can tell you that days we have come at it, I said it in parliament, mm -hmm. now people are demanding RTI should not even have a signature. If an anonymous RTI application comes, the government so, so should So beyond political it. party lines, I would ask you that do you think we really moved on our uh, whole resolution and resolve to end corruption? I mean, corruption has been the main issue in uh, whichever election, whichever party and whichever government in power. but. As a member of parliament here, as a sensitive leader, do you think that we are really, uh, you know? I think the fight, the fight against corruption is the biggest challenge any government faces. We may, I may bring up Sushma Swaraj ji and uh, Shivraj Chauhan ji and go on and on. They may say, you know, a, uh, they may say Raja and etc. Yeah. That, that political battle is on, but I as an individual believe that no government wants or likes corruption and everybody wants to fight corruption. The question is how do we ensure it? There are two ways, by practicing what we preach as a party and the other way is to put so many checks and balances in place that it becomes practically impossible to get away with it. Okay. So, there are two ways of doing it. I, I think a lot of issues and we can really keep talking but we will have to wrap it up. But 2016 and I would say Sushmita Dev, your quest for 2016. My quest for 2016, uh, I think I, I am uh, looking at uh, SM elections. So, I would like to uh, see Congress create history and form government for the fourth time which is very rare I think and uh, I have to say that I am optimistic. And individually? Sorry? Individually, any, any, any such? Well, individually I would like to say that uh, uh, I would like to emerge and evolve as an effective parliamentarian. Uh, I would like to also evolve as a, uh, as a, as a reliable leader and more importantly a fearless leader. I am sure so this should make a lot of people who are really <laughs> watching this and I really thank you uh, for talking about it and uh, looking at it this way. Thank you so much and all the very best to you, you. and spending your time on Raj Sabha TV. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much and that was Sushmita Dev talking to us on range of issues on the quest on Raj Sabha TV. I hope you like this particular edition of the quest here. Thanks for watching. Namaskar and bye bye. <laughs>